Shit to introduce the ends to the means. They got me screaming now. And welcome back to another episode of Chillin' in the Wolf Den. I'm your co-host Ryan Darris, and today I brought with me Alicia to fill in for Jake. Hi! Uh, this is a show where we just talk about stuff we're interested in, review movies, shows, games, all that good stuff. Um, but if you like it, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share it around with your friends, comment below, and yeah, don't forget to check out the links below too if you want to go at that extra mile. we got a bunch of stuff you can download, buy, and all that good stuff. But uh, real quick, get into our spotlight. What you been watching or playing or doing lately? <laughs> Hi, me. Uh, well, we just finished watching, rewatching Daredevil. That was good. I like that. I like it a lot. Um, You'll be getting into that. I'm still binging Animal Crossing no. for like the fifth time. I'm not gonna come up. Uh, yeah, sorry, my cat's no. here. Um, and um, yeah, that's it. Animal Crossing and Daredevil. <laughs> Well, I play a lot of Horizon Zero Dawn again, uh, and then I watched that also that little four-minute animation cartoon thing they made called Soul Levante, which was pretty dope. I liked it. I thought it was cool. Soul Levante. It was that little four-minute cartoon. Oh, that shit did not make sense to me. Well, it's not that it makes sense. You just don't know what the fuck's going on. It was just weird. I was like, what the fuck is even happening? I can't connect with this. Well, it's just a short. It's, not, it's just weird. It's not meant to connect. It's, it's a story. Weird. Anyways, uh, that's about that. But moving in, going further into that, I want to get into a little, a short anime reviews, which just a couple, or three, we had watched, and we are just going to give like a quick little general opinion about it. So the first one, Drifting Home. Which was the one about the, the anime about the kids in the building that were like floating through that the water. That was cute. Are. That was really cute. Yeah, I really liked that one. It reminded me a lot of like Spirited Away, that mm -hmm. kind of vibes. Definitely good, fun to watch with you, like your kids if you have any. It was very innocent, very childish in like a nice way, you know? Like you could tell it was really wholesome. It wasn't weird and goofy, you know? Or yeah. you know how they like sexualize the kids? Or, like, give them really weird personalities. They were just really cute. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. This I could watch with, like, kids. Like, baby's first anime. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. I'd say I'd probably give it, like, a 8.5 out of 10. Mm -hmm. um, the second one we had watched was Bubble. And that was the, like, more action-y one about the city underwater. And they had all the bubbles going around. Didn't like it. <laughs> I did not. You, I, I thought it was gonna be something cooler, you know. And it was just basically like a, like Ponyo. It was just like Ponyo, but just turned into like a more serious anime. But it would say it had the same, same fucking story, same exact story. Yeah, Mermaid. it did felt like a very like rip off kind of of it. Um, I thought the animation was definitely good, but the story was it was like meh. It was alright. Yeah, and it's like, <clears throat> they always go with this trope, and I hate it when they do that. It's like, they have the one stoic -y character that's smarter than everybody, falls in love with the dumb, ditzy one because he gets to teach her everything that is about life. Like, they're more than, it's more than just them being dumb and ditzy. They're, she was like, not human, so she didn't know anything about life, and he liked her and fell in love with her just because he basically like got value out of like teaching her what the fuck cereal was or what bread was yeah and he's like oh my god I'm, I'm amazing you know i love you yeah i was gonna say there's no characters that i really like connected to or was super interested in they're all just kind of very basic bland yeah um yeah very stereotypical <clears throat> this one yeah i definitely wasn't as much of a fan of i'd probably only give it like maybe a six out of ten I thought there was going to be a way more serious reason why, like, the bubble and, like, that sinking black hole and everything. Like, mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be, like, crazier. But they were like, no, it's just a mermaid walking on land. What would you give it out of ten? Four. Four. <laughs> Four out of ten. And then, all right, going on to the last one, which these are all on Netflix, by the way. Don't know if I mentioned that. <clears throat> there was Vampire in the Garden. 
That one was cute. This one was probably my favorite one, I'd say. That was very cute. That one was very romantic, very sad. Yeah, um, the animation too, it, it was really clean, like it was animated super well as far as like the movement and the action. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like how basic like the, I guess the designs were on them, they felt very... They could um, have added more detail. Yeah, like there was like not much depth to the character, you know, it was very flat face and all that. It had the um, right coloring and shading. It was just like the detail to like, also the vampire culture, they could have had a lot more like designs, <clears throat> beads, patterns that meant things. Yeah. You know, it just looked simple. But yeah, the I really liked like the uh, story to it and um, the like aesthetic of how the world looks and everything. Mm -hmm. I really liked too just the, the way they animated like the vampire attacks it very much reminded me of like demon slayer and like inuyasha the way the they had like their powers almost i love the star-crossed lover trope too where it's like they want to be together but it's just not written in their fate they just can't be together even though like till death basically yeah like that that's cute but yeah it was a cool like attack on titan show where it's like the the world changed because of this one thing and now you know everyone's dealing with this shit mm -hmm. um but out of 10 stars what would you give it an eight and a half yeah i'd probably give it a i'd probably also give it an eight and a half i think it's pretty good i think if the the designs like i said on the face and stuff were like a little bit better i'd probably give it a nine but i think that was where it was kind of lacking for me mm-hmm um, but yeah, if you guys haven't seen them, you should go check them out. They're on Netflix. Pretty dope. Well, except Bubble. That one was like, okay. Yeah. But, uh, now we're gonna get into the meat potatoes. We're gonna be reviewing Daredevil, the mm -hmm. Netflix show. <laughs> because there is gonna be coming a Marvel Disney version soon. But, uh, this interesting story, because she hadn't really watched it until, you know, recent, and... She only started watching it because I started re-watching it, but when she started checking it out, it was already on season two. So she watched season two, season three, and then season one. Yeah. So she had a very interesting way of viewing things, seeing, like, Kingpin's already fall and how his power has ascended versus, you know, him building, slowly graduating, as well as Daredevil's backstory and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, what, what, did you, what did you think of... Season one. We'll, st we'll start in order. Well, for sure, I do like Karen. Karen was like, she, everybody thought she was like, you know, the dummy secretary and whatever, but she really proved herself to be. And it wasn't like a cringe, like cliche, like girl boss. She genuinely worked her way up and she had like her faults here and there. And it was like, it, it doesn't like, it didn't scream, we're trying to make this, like, a girl boss, but in the most cringiest, yeah. like, cliche, corny way possible. Like, mm -hmm. it was very realistic, and that's why I was like, okay, Karen, I like you. I like, and the actors. Yeah, I love Karen, and yeah, Deborah Ann Wool plays, plays that role so well. I, I, she really made me fall in love with the character, for sure, and definitely her as an actress afterwards. Um, and it was, it was funny, too, because I remember after season two, you kept wondering about hearing her mention about her shooting Wesley. Yeah. Wesley, then he finally got to that scene and you're like, oh shit. Yeah. That's what, oh my god. Well, one, I like the fact that each season didn't have like a villain that was just cut and done with that season. Like how Kingpin just gradually kept coming in mm -hmm. and he was like a constant issue. That made me feel like, well, yeah, that's realistic. He's he's going to last for a minute. He's not just going to be a one, bam, bam, done with that season, you know? Yeah. Um, especially, uh, didn't they bring in, <laughs> I wanted to call them the thumb, the hand, right? Yeah, the hand. <laughs> they they kept coming in and out or, like, showing hints and stuff. I kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, I was trying to see, but they, their story, the hand and Electra, gets finished in the Defender show. Yes. I haven't uh, watched that yet. Don't like Electra. I'm sorry. I didn't like Electra. A lot of people are gonna hate me for that opinion. I don't like her. Yeah, the Elodie, I think her name is Elodie Young or something. The play, actress, plays love it. Super well. Super well. It's just the character herself, don't like her. I'm yeah. like, Ugh. I thought she was gonna be like, um, uh, what was her name? Not Nessa, but well, Nessa's older sister. 
Nessa Oglu. Oh, Talia? Talia. I thought she was gonna be like Talia Ogul. Nah. She came out way more damaged than both Talia and Nessa. Because Talia and Nessa were damaged, but they like, they knew to hold that shit down and hold their ground and like run shit. Whereas Electra was just a fucking cannon. Like, she was ready to get like, snap. And it was kind of easy to manipulate her. I was just like, girl, come on. <laughs> Self-awareness. Like, you know you're bad. But you can't you can't just be easily triggered like that. You can't do it. If you know yeah. that you're like a fucking killing machine, you can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to fall to everybody's whims and stuff or whatever. Like, if anything, uh, Daredevil, um, he could have manipulated the shit out of her. Mm -hmm. Like, easily she showed, like, if I give you emotional investment and, like, caring, you know, love and stuff, you will do anything I say. And that is exactly what she ex expresses. Like, anything you say, so long as you're taking care of me, you got it. And I'm like, Yeah, ah! it's just the problem is her, that killer aspect, he couldn't, he couldn't get her to stop that, and that was, like, his thing. Yeah. That's where I was like, oh, yeah. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's... That was definitely, I, I definitely liked her portrayal. She, I thought she she pulled that, like, broken craziness very well. Yes. Um, she was If she was written, the point was for her to be, like, broken, crazy, and, like, unhinged. I like it. I was like, I get it. Not my type, but I get it. Yeah. I like it. Also liked, uh, since we talked about his first two loves, I also liked uh, nurse. him and the night nurse. Loved her. I genuinely, I was like, that was a relationship I would have wanted him in had he been like, all right, I'm done being Daredevil, I'm done doing all this, like, mm -hmm. I just want to settle down and have a normal life. I would want him to be with the fucking nurse, because yeah. him and the nurse were just so cute. They were so witty together. They had, like, their little banters. It was so cute. I was like, dude, just, just, just get with, just get with her. It's okay. Just stop the life. You can stop the life. It's okay. Just settle down with the nerds. You guys are gonna have such cute babies. Yeah. <laughs> they were so cute. Yeah, no, I definitely liked them. I, I love to how just very like, um, what's the right word? Just logical and real she is. She's like, dude, I'm sorry, I just ain't got time for this bullshit, like you getting all this crazy shit. It was very like you could tell the breakup breakup was like amicable, you know? She just kinda said, like, I can't do this. Mad respect, love you. But we, I can't do this. Yeah, was, you know, I was, can't. Was, this life isn't very for me. mutual and understandable. They're like, hey, we get it. We both can't with the situation. See, that's what I like about her too. She didn't make it like a crazy issue. She was mm -hmm. just like, just gonna say this right now. Not for me. If you're not done with it, all right, cool. I'm out. Yeah. I also like, thought oh. that one scene where he saves her in the car wreck and she like saves him at the end and just starts crying. Like the way she broke down just looks so fucking real and genuine. Oh, yeah. Uh, that scene was, like, really great. I thought she did amazing there. Yeah, out of all of his, like, girlfriends on the show, I was like, okay, I would want you to stay with the... She's the one that got away, for sure. <laughs> yeah. She's the one that got away, but... Um, yeah, but speaking of good relationships, what do you think of Foggy? Oh, Foggy and, uh, pff, fuck, what's her name? What's her name? Oh, his girlfriend? Yeah, it's... The, the lawyer, what's her name? I'm forgetting her name right I now. I forgot her name, but her character development. Yeah, because you see her when she's like basically already starting to become like a decent person. Yeah, and I see started season, season one two. When she's just a piece of shit. Season two, just trash. season three, she was amazing. So supportive, so nice, a little bit of a cheerleader. And I was like, okay, Fog, I like it. And then the first season, I was like, "Who the fuck is this?" What a yeah, what a, <laughs> what a bitch. yeah. Because instead of getting to see, you didn't get to see the transition. You used to go see end of transition and then recoil all yeah. the way back real quick. And I was just like, "What the fuck?" But yeah, no. And the the first fucking season one, I was like, "Dude, glow up." She yeah. had a massive glow up. I kind of liked her character development. Same. I could tell, like, she was just, she was just around the wrong people, you and know? And Foggy deserved it, too. He, he deserved to have someone that was, you know, a good person, so she... Hot, good person, very smart, very supportive. Rich lawyer. Rich lawyer, you know? Because I, I hate that when they, like... Because Foggy could be, could be considered as, like, the sidekick friend or the goofy, ugly, like, fat Oh, even friend, in the comics, like, they made that, like, a thing. Like, yeah. Matt was always taking this girl. Yeah. Foggy was always complaining, how come I can't get chicks and exactly. stuff? Exactly. Like, so, definitely made this character. Especially when, in, like, season one, he tried to get at Karen and just wasn't connecting. Oh, which, yeah. Another thing in the comics is that. Yeah. 
And not gonna lie, I didn't ship it because when him and Karen were together, I seen it as like siblings. Yeah, it seemed I didn't like they the were siblings. Connection. It didn't seem like romantic. I was like, no, if they were cousins or like brother and sister, that would be such a good duo. Yeah. But as a couple, I did not like it. And so when he got with what's her name, um, I was like, yes, he yeah, he's the type grows of guy that and to, to, like becomes a better person. Yeah, oh, yeah, I really like them together. especially because he's a he's a genuinely good person. You know, mm-hmm. so he was like just telling her like, dude, when you had like, I liked you better when you had like a soul. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. You know. And it worked. It cut her deep and she's like started thinking about shit. Yeah. And then she started helping him and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I think they, they were cute together for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when he died, when he almost died and they just shebanged yeah. in the third season. You know, I was like, yep, yep. I feel it. Yep. Just yep, do that. All right, well, uh, I'm trying to think of what else. How how do you feel about um, Madame Gao and the other boss leaders that Kingpin was talking to in the in the first season? To be honest, I'm gonna have to rewatch it and get like there do a little Russian bit more dudes. of like a deep. No, I remember yeah. them. It's just the like the depth of the situation. I feel like I don't know the context. Yeah. Like, because when I see Madame Gao and all of them, I was just like, okay, he's just fucking with different mobs, yeah. you know? But I don't know, like, when she started talking about the hand and started talking about, like, Well, for the most context, part, yeah, like, all the mob bosses were just normal, like, the Russian gangsters, you know, mm-hmm. the, the Chinese gangsters. But yeah. Madame Gao, was, she was in control of, like, the Yukus or whatever, but it was also a secret front for a secret organization called The Hand. Yeah, and see... When Kingpin was just fucking with different mobs, I was like, I get it, of course. He's going to be doing that. He's like a Falcone in this universe, yeah. you know? He's going to be messing around with different mobs, trying to get them all connected, so he has control over them. But Madame Gao bringing in, like, the hand, I was like, I don't know too much about the hand enough to be like, holy shit about mm-hmm. it. Um, but I was like, okay, so yeah, she's... Yeah, a lot more obscure. Yeah, I was about to say, like, she's basically, like, you put her in, like, the Asian or the Chinese mob, and then... The hand is just, it kind of makes me think of the League of the Assassins. I was going to say they're basically so I was like, that. And that's all I kept telling myself is, oh, she's basically a part of the League of yeah, Assassins. Yeah, she's Marvel's League of Assassins. That's pretty much what most people recognize. Yeah, if as. anything, I was like, she might, like, just so I can understand it more, I was like, she might be, like, technically, like, the Ra's al Ghul. Kind of, basically. But um, not the Ra's yeah, al Ghul, which but that's her it's sad status. sad because you don't get to see the rest of her story until Defenders, but the hand... Is basically like that, but instead of one person in charge, like Roz, it's the five fingers of the hand, and she's one That's of the five fingers. That's what I was thinking. She was, wasn't she the thumb? Forget, probably. I think that's why I want to call it the thumb, is because she said she was a thumb, and it was like, because she was the most yeah. utilized or something like that. Like, and you need the, the thumb. The, you actually saw one of the other members, which was the Red Ninja Nobu. He was one of the other members of the hand. Yeah, and he didn't Daredevil kill the... Nobu? Yeah, he sets on fire. That was just funny, you know, no yeah. killing rule. I was like, but you killed him. Yeah, you I killed know. Him. And that never mentions it. <laughs> you set him on fire. Yeah, but you okay. burned him to death. That was pretty, that was pretty painful. Like, he was set on fire. You didn't just, like, stab him or anything. Like, he was set on mm-hmm. fire and he burned for a little bit before he died. Yeah. Matt. <laughs> he, he was burned alive. Um, yeah, I liked it. Now... Now, just because I want to know, like, deeper, um, mm-hmm. like, meanings, I want to watch The Defenders, and I want to watch, yeah. um, The Fist, what was that? Oh, Iron Fist? Iron Fist. C- yeah. I it, tried watching it, I just couldn't get onto it. Most people don't, were, most people don't really like Iron Fist, there, a lot of people are upset with that one. It's good if you want to get the extra backstory stuff on the hand, mm-hmm. but you can get most of it in just The Defenders. Mm-hmm. Um, but speaking of that, then, what about... The rest of the hand kind of story, which is like Stick and his uh, like secret cult, I forget what they're calling him, um, and also the whole thing with the black sky that the hand was trying to get. Not gonna lie, it. I think it's because I haven't watched it enough to like connect to it or like find like the depth. Mm-hmm. I just watching it, I'm like, this is like it reminds me of every secret like 
assassination society yeah. that they have in those like i think marvel or like dc dc mm -hmm. where it's like the league of assassins the court of owls that's all they remind me of yeah. the hand like they're just a secret assassin group or the illuminati of like the underground yeah and they're just they're all after like power or control mm -hmm. or certain items that's why I, like when i watched them i was just like okay they're just another yeah civil, they're just another community Mm -hmm. that are trying to do that you know so i was just like okay what about stick stick he was cool like i get it he didn't want to connect like he as soon as matt started getting closer to him he was like oh the chase you know? that's what the group is called the chase yeah the chase oh yeah. yeah yeah but yeah the whole group's about no attachments and all that mm -hmm. you're just in this for the war you're a soldier yeah and that's why i was just like you could tell he got attached to but, matt yeah, but as soon as he see seen it. matt get attached he's like oh that's shit exactly why he left I can't in the beginning do it, he's like know? i'm failing and he's failing mm -hmm. this is not gonna go well but yeah interesting character i really love the relationship because of just how complex it is they yeah. care so much about each other but at the same time they like disagree in so many things on life and see this is where i like i always criticize that whole where they it's in every again marvel and dc where they have like the older father figure with the young child or the young yeah. being that's still growing and developing you can't get mad at them for having an emotional connection yeah they're a child especially because stick he was an orphan. Yeah. He was orphan. Well, it follows the it Daredevil follows the old kung fu movie story like tropes, which is why you have the old grandmaster, the young student, yeah, who's usually an orphan. Yeah, and like that's fine. It's just when you start being like, "Don't get a love attached to me emotionally," yeah. I'm like, "That is a fucking child. The child is gonna want emotional connection. It's a child. Yeah. Especially like." Just any human being in general, like you, like they. I would assume you would have to wait until the frontal lobe is fully developed, mm -hmm. in order for them to learn not to do that. Yeah. In which usually, you know, twenty one or twenty five. That's usually when you can train somebody if they're willing to. I guess like that's where I'm like, you would go for a child because they're easier to teach, I guess, or like install that system or that habit. But also, yeah, you can't get mad at them for getting emotionally attached. Yeah. They're, they're going to do that. It does go to show, like, what happens when it does work. It, you know, look at Electra. You fucked her up. Really bad ideas of attachment and obsessions and, and also don't. And that is why you don't do that. Yeah, and they just lose, lose the sense of, like, the meaning of life and just, you know, killing is nothing to them well, yeah because you made them into like an object a machine yeah. you know but also is uh, another great way to show how stick really does care because with matt he wasn't in the chase yet and he was still trying to train him yeah and he saw that matt was too weak so he had to he couldn't show any feelings but in that flashback with you know electra he ends up like Get, you know, letting her hug him, or whatever, and it shows it's because she was too strong and needed that love. And that, but you get to see a different side of Stick for each. Especially because you could tell he was like, okay, fuck. If I don't give you emotional, like some humanity, yeah, you might even just kill Last thing, me yeah, and everybody Electra else. Was, like, you need more humanity and Daredevil. Was, I need to take away a little. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like you can't have your pie and eat it. Like yeah. I don't know. I was just like. It, you're never going to win when it comes to teaching children that. Because, again, you're never going to know which kid you're going to end up with after that. They're all going to receive that information differently. They're all going to learn. Their psychology is just going to change drastically. Again, you could get an Electra or you can get a Matt. Yeah. And there is no in-between. You have to wait until they're older to get the in-between. Because then when they grow up, they just they, they turn into Matt and Electra. Yeah. You know? Exactly. All right, then what about... um. What do you think of Matt's just overall character progression through season one and like the story itself in season one? Season one, I wasn't a fan of Matt in season one. He's very stubborn on like, yeah, I definitely. need to do this myself. I need to do this myself, myself, the myself. Year one which hero. is, yeah. this is that's what they always do. All the vigilantes, they always do that. Where it's like, I need to do it alone. I need to do it by myself. 
and uh, you know and i'm not just just for marvel vigilantes it's every vigilante in dc and in marvel mm -hmm. it's always let me do it by myself i can do it by myself and then i just i felt no remorse for matt when he was like mentally fucking deteriorating and mm -hmm. like physically dying i'm like well yeah because you're doing it all by yourself yeah yeah are you not surprised yeah look at that you went and did that by yourself now there's nobody fucking help you there's nobody you can call you just had somebody die, like Electro, when Electro mm -hmm. died. You have nobody to talk to you about it. Yeah, man, that's kind of on you, you know? Although, I did... It was nice once him and he was, like, letting Foggy in after Foggy found out and finally started accepting that one. Yeah, when he let Foggy in, I'm like, exactly. That Matt, scene, at least you have, like, one person that knows you in and outside of that life. That can help you, you know? Man, that scene, though, where Foggy finds out is so good, and he's just, like, angry at Matt, and he's like, how many fingers am I holding my butt? <laughs> One. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'd punch you if you were in pain <laughs> and broken. <laughs> yeah, and he was going over, like, the flashbacks. Are you even really blind? Like, that was... That was cute, and I understood. I, I hate that like, always yeah. says it's complicated. He needs to just say, yes, but I have echolocation. Just, it's not complicated. If you were to just say, hey, I am blind. I can't fucking see, but I can see through sound, like echolocation. echolocation. I'd be like, I'm oh. a bat, more or less. Oh, okay. So, you, yeah, you're like a bat or it's like, like the those writer, fucking whales. It's like the rather either couldn't have figured out an easy way to say it or literally was just like, no, it needs to be all complicated. Yeah, I need to be fucking, uh, what's the word? I need to be, uh, it's not stoic, but like, uh, it's vague. Vague. Yeah. Vague. You, I just need to be vague, vague about, about it. it. You know, I'm not going to be straightforward. I, I need to be that. mysterious. I need to be vague. It's like, no, d so help Stop me to understand. Stop saying it's complicated when it's not complicated. I'm so tired of that trope. And then you get fucking upset when they're still upset with you and they don't forgive you right away. It's like, of course, because they don't understand. You're just saying it's complicated. How the fuck? What does that mean? What yeah. does that mean? What do you mean it's complicated? It's like, yeah, you could say, yeah, it's complicated. I could control the wind particles and it lifts up and creates this draft and I start to rise. It's like, or you could just say, yeah, I fucking can fly. I have superpowers. Yeah. Uh, if it's truly complicated, it would, you would be like, oh, I, I can't hear. Like or... if you have to explain Lost, the TV show, that's complicated. Yeah. Or if you were to like have to break down the science behind it and there's no term for it like oh i feed off of the micro da, 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 and this combines with this this and that and that's how i did it i might be like okay that's fucking complicated but if you said echolocation i'm like oh got it sick simple <laughs> get it all right cool you know yeah i'd be like that's cool cool that's, that's cool that you can do that you can still see as as a friend foggy i'd been like i understand that yeah okay you're blind and that's just <laughs> one of your senses that just Improved. Yeah, I think if cool. you would have worded it like that, Foggy would have been like a little less upset after, at least as far as the blind stuff goes. Yeah. But I was just like, oh man, you're just leaving it vague, and he's just gonna be more pissed because of that. Yeah, and I didn't blame him. I'm like, yeah, <clears throat> Fog, like, I get it. I'd be mad too. Just yeah. like, be straight up, straight up at this point. I know everything. Give me the deets now. <laughs> you know. Yeah. All right. Overall, what would you rate season one of Daredevil? Six out of ten. Really? That low? Yeah. Damn. Just because when I seen season two and season three, season three was definitely my favorite. I'm going to go with a solid nine out of ten for me. Well, and that's also because I'm not, like, it's always the first season. The first seasons, seasons of most shows aren't great. Because it's the See, first... Most people actually usually say the opposite. I know. Because they usually say the first season is amazing. And I'm like... Mm. I feel like they get better after they've had more story developed. They get more money. They, depends you know, on the they show bring in more no. characters. It depends. I just, that's what I said for most. Most shows, the first season, in my opinion, is never the best. Yeah. But there are those shows that where the first season is the only good season, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, but, yeah. I would say season one was six out of ten. And then it gradually went up. Second season... Gotcha. Eight out of ten, and then the third whoa, season. Whoa, wait, we'll get into that, oh. Jesus. Oh, okay. Skipping ahead. <laughs> All right, now season two, the Punisher Electra season. Uh, what do you think of? We already kind of talked about Electra, so what do you what do you think of Punisher, his backstory and character progression through that? I'm a villain sympathizer, so I was like, I get it. Let oh. him be. 
Well, he's not even really a villain. He's more yeah, of but they painted girl. him as a, a villain because he, you know, did the whole murder thing, and he was out just fucking killing people and just going full vendetta. You well, know? it's just uh, it's two sides of a coin because you know they they chose to write it and see it that way, and that's kind of typically how Punisher is seen. Mm-hmm. But you know, Deadpool, Wolverine, they all kind of hit on those same levels, but usually they're seen on the side of like hero. But they all kind of lean to anti-hero. It's just like whatever at the time in the show or comic movie, whatever, they want to have the society see them as at that point. Yeah. Because there was a turning point where they all started calling Punisher a hero and yeah. saying he was doing, you know, righteous work and shit. Yeah. And it's just like, that was such like, I, it was ironic too. There, he was doing hero, like, righteous work and I'm like, he's murdering people? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's still bad, but also... Given what all, happened all to bad his, guys. given what happened to his family, given what happened to him in general, like yeah, I was like yeah no death, yeah. I mean, that's also been like my thing is the courts in that scene were gonna sentence him to death. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, then why is he in the wrong for sentencing those people, which you guys probably would have sentenced to death anyway. Yeah, I wish they kind of actually brought that point up in the show a little more too. Yeah, like because I thought they did the the struggle between like Matt like. No, Punisher's wrong, and then being like, "Fuck, maybe Punisher's right." Like, is my way really the right way? I like, I, I thought it was a great portrayal of how the two characters very similar on a similar path, but very different about the way they go things. Yeah, because like, if anything, like, let's say the fucking Punisher brought in all of the people that like were connected. He had all of his evidence, what have you. You know, they all went to court. They would have gotten a death sentence or life sentences, which is basically a death sentence. You're just going to be there until you die. They're going to fucking well, maybe die his, anyway. His point was, but most of them get out, you know? They yeah. have so much money or, or people connections that it doesn't matter. They might serve a year or two or even less and then be back on the streets doing the same stuff. Yeah, and like in a perfect world, well not perfect world, but like in a world where they would see justice, you mm-hmm. know they would get the death penalty. Yeah. You know, if they didn't have those connections or they didn't have anything to get them out, it was just like a nope, they're going to the death penalty, you know that they would be they would be killed. Yeah. So like what's the difference between Punisher killing them and like the court so the yeah. courts justifyingly like killing them. Yeah. You know, the only thing that I can see as a difference is that like Punisher did it in, like, a fucking gruesome way, whereas, of course, just give you, like, the poison and then you're done, you know? Yeah. Where I'm like, okay. Well, and he... I mean, Punisher is pretty... He makes sure he does stuff, but, like... He makes sure it hurts. There's evidence <laughs> presented in the court, I'd say, is the other thing, so you can't just be like... Because, yeah, like, we as viewers know Punisher, he knows he's killing bad guys. Like, he knows what the fuck they've done. They definitely deserve it. But, like, you know, in a real world, people are like, well, he could just be executing random-ass people, you know? Yeah, there's no evidence and stuff like that, like... And on top of Daredevil saying, like, what about, you know, those innocent bystanders that are get hit in the crossfire? Yeah. You know? Those are the ones where I'm like... Okay, yeah. That was fucked up. Yeah. You know, you... you I get it, you fucking were out to kill this guy, but you, like, blew up five cars behind you. Yeah. And they didn't even know what you were doing there for, you know? Mm-hmm. That's where I was like, yeah, those crimes I see you do have to fall for it, you know? Yeah, no, and, oh my god, that that scene after I think it's season two, but where Daredevil saves Punisher from the mob bosses, and he's, like, talking with the graveyard at the very end, and Punisher tells him the backstory about his daughter, his family's death or whatever, and the Penny and the Dime book or whatever. Yep. One of the best scenes I've ever seen, in my opinion. I watched that too, and I was so like, well. yep. I get it, dude. You know, and I, I can respect respect Matt and the team for trying to like help him by saying like, oh, he's just like mentally unwell and he's just like not doing good or whatever. Which I kind of liked Punisher Stan as much as I hated him because it ruined his chances and he was doing all just to talk to Kingpin. Mm-hmm. I really liked kind of what he was saying though. He's like, dude, I, that's not the actual case though, and the people that deserve that are like. I'm disrespecting them. Yeah, to the people that are actually mentally unwell and who are actually fucked in the head and doing all that shit because they don't know why. Or PTSD. 100%. But for him to be like, nah, that's that's not it. I am fully conscious. I am not mentally unwell. Well, he was a little bit unhinged, but not... Definitely, yeah. You know, it's it's one of those things... it's, It's one of those things where it's hard. It's like in a real world, 
yeah, that that guy's definitely unwell. But in like this, you know, comic book universe, it's like he is very sane. He does understand what he's doing is wrong, and he'll even admit that. But he just doesn't care. So it's like he kind of is sane, but like if in a real world stance, it probably wouldn't be like that so much. I don't know the term for it, but there's like there's certain levels where it's like somebody is mentally unwell and has these mental disorders, but they're still conscious yeah. of themselves. Of themselves, whereas somebody that's past that limit is mentally not well and they do not understand it or see it. Yeah. To them, they are fine, and you are the ones that are, like, crazy or yeah, what have like, you. It's but like being sociopathic, I guess, almost. In a way, yeah. yeah. That's where those people are, like, gone, you yeah. know? Like, the Joker, gone. Yeah, just... Gone. That's it. Like, those people are, like, yeah, you could use that card and say they're mentally unwell, and they don't know what they're doing because they they don't, honestly. They don't know, like, the right and wrong, you know? Yeah. Um, I would say in Joker's case, it's not even a matter of right and wrong. It's just I am, I do, you know. Yeah, he doesn't see, or he does see it's wrong. It's just he doesn't feel a need to not do it. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, it's wrong, okay. Well, the, whole, well the whole thing behind the Joker is he's hyper seeing. Like, it, it's like kind of on and off written that like he knows he exists in a comic book, so he doesn't, he knows none of it matters. It's all just a joke, so... In, like, a way, it it's, like, not right and wrong. It's just, like, I know this doesn't exist. Yeah. So, it, you know, there's no meaning to it for him. Yeah. But, yeah, um, super, super great work with The Punisher. I love John Bernthal's acting. In fact, I, I ever mentioned this to you before that, like, before I had seen the Daredevil show, Punisher to me was like, yeah, he was always a badass, like, oh yeah, he kills all these bad guys, but he never was, like, boogeyman scary to me, but after the show, I was like, no, the Punisher is, like, fucking terrifying. It'd be like seeing Michael Myers coming at you or something. Dude, have you seen the Punisher running at you full fucking force? Just, like, carrying I'd turrets. <laughs> not even. If he was just fucking, like, doing this... You know, I'd fucking shit myself. I'd be like, oh, dude, he's not running at me, right? Right? Let me get out of his way. <laughs> like, I would be like, oh, get out of his way. Get out of his way. <laughs> you know? Move. 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 It reminds me of that Rick and Morty quote where Morty was just like, if you don't think my Rick is coming for you, he's go he is. And if you think you're safe, you're not. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm like, Punisher is like, yeah, you're so fucked if he's after you. Yeah. And in this, we don't, we actually don't get much Kingpin, but what did you think of Kingpin's little interaction with him and Punisher and, and that fight too? I was just like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> God damn it. And then that's when I was like, he's coming back in season three. He, I can see, mm -hmm. like, the reason the why he's again. not involved is because he's doing under the hand shit. Yeah, you got, that, you got the break point in season two where it's like, he already had his rise and fall, but he's building for the comeback. Yeah, and that's why season two, when we didn't see him, I was just like, yeah. Yeah, he's going to be Calvin. in season three. <laughs> he's going to be in season three for sure. Yeah. And, and that's I, why the, when he did come to season three, I was like, yep. Yeah. So good. This is going to be his season for sure. Man, and I didn't even mention this from in season one but in general all all the seasons they have one of the like season two had multiple but they all have one crazy amazingly done hallway fight scene yeah. you know they have the first season which he beats the shit out of all those thugs who kidnapped the boy which mm -hmm. fucking love that scene so good especially when he takes off his mask and to like make sure the kid's not scared at the end like just greatly done and then the season two, when, like, we get two. We get two. We get Punisher in jail, taking on, like, 50 dudes, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. And we also get Punisher carrying, I mean, Daredevil carries an unconscious Punisher on his back, taking out all the bikers, which, ugh, crazy choreography, amazingly done. It's done in basically, like, one shot, too, which is insane. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, uh really like the grittiness of the show for didn't mention that before was just all the fight scenes wish that was like more apparent in like just kind of superhero stuff in general marvel and D like dc's eat grittier but i'd say other than the batman movie i don't think they've ever been as gritty as the daredevil show on any of the other products really yeah but uh super amazing work on the fight scenes um what did you think of matt's progression in this season Pretty good. I feel like he was starting, like, Punisher was a good 
um, how should I say it? Like a good lesson to show that, like, yeah, exactly what he was. That's yeah, how I see it too. A and lesson. I feel like like it gave him that sort of um, understanding, you know, that like not all murders or all like killings are like unjustified or you know it kind of put him in that tough spot with like i get it yeah like i get why you did it i get it i understand your anger and that's where he was just like ah but we gotta still be good ah but i get it you know and it's like i'm still angry with you but we have to be good it's almost like if if matt could have came to the to a realization and this is just for a show not for real life but if matt could have kind of like came to this realization like okay I'm the hero, I'm not supposed to kill, and I have to save when I can. But some some people out there, like the Punisher, they kind of get a free pass. Like, I'm doing God's work, but no killing. He's kind of doing the same thing, but he killing. gets to kill. Because it's like that balance almost, you know. It's like you're doing the devil's work, but it's not bad. Yeah. It's just, it's just more morally Yeah, if he could have just like came to acceptance, like, okay, I don't kill, but... Punisher gets to kill. Punisher can kill. <laughs> you know. But, I'm uh, not him, you know. And then, and all that too was technically the the B plot. The the main plot was the Electra and Hand stuff going on. What you, would you think of that now that we're talking about season two? I know we kind of thought on Electra, but more of like the Hand's plot. Yeah. When, when the Hand came in, I was just like, damn. Because you know? <laughs> I was, I was like, like, okay. The... the, the in season one with the hand stuff, if you remember, they tried to, when he first meets up with Stick, Stick's like, hey, we gotta go on a mission, and there's that boy in the, that, those metal, like, cargo bins, and mm-hmm. Stick tries to kill him, and Daredevil's like, what the fuck, and goes the same, he's like, he's the black sky, and he's like, he's a kid. Uh, I don't know if you realize, that's what they were trying to do to Elektra afterwards, because they didn't have that anymore, mm-hmm. they were going to make Elektra the black sky, because she's been trained since so young, and she's so powerful and skilled. Yeah. And see, when I, when I see that, I'm just like, you guys are going to run into the same fucking issue. Like, the, the same issue they couldn't control, you know, Which uh, you'll see Electra. in Defenders. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't control I think control like her Electra. story in Defenders more. I hope so, because... Uh, not I not like her character and like a, I really like her character, but more just like, I enjoy the story of what's going on now. Yeah. With the hand, I'm just like... You guys are going to run into the same fucking issue. It's it's never going to end. You guys want to keep making this, like, mindless warrior that's going to do and say everything that you guys want. But, oh, no, they're human. They're also, you can't control a human being. They're human, you know? It's yeah. just kind of like, no shit, you know? I don't think there's ever a possible case where you have full control over somebody to the point of, like, they're just, they don't have a soul, yeah. you know? I don't think that's possible. People have gotten really close in real life and in TV shows that make sense, mm-hmm. you know? But it, there's always that one little bit that just, like, can't. Well, you can't. that is supposed to be the thing with them in the black sky is doing that. They have to kill the person, and when they bring them back, it's the way they bring them back is very similar to the Lazarus Pit. It, like, mm-hmm. takes away their soul. Their soul and humanity. So that is their thinking, is, like, we train them, we get them under our control as much as we can, and then when we kill them and bring them back, they won't have their soul, and we can fully And they've already manipulate. got the training and stuff like that. Yeah. So I was like, okay. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, I think that's pretty much kind of all for season two... Season two, I definitely like Punisher's trope more. Yeah, I, I like. I definitely enjoyed his story way more for sure. I also think it's because it had a little bit more realistic, a, a little bit more realistic story that I could get behind. You yeah, know? a lot more grounded. Man, avenging his family versus secret that was society killed, with yeah. Lazarus Pit stuff. Yeah, I think personally, I've just grown to not like the secret societies anymore, just because I see it so often. There's yeah. always a secret society. In fairness, though, at least as far as comics books go, not as like novels and literature in general, but as far no. as comic books go, the hand was kind of one of the first. I think they came basically like a little bit after the League of Assassins, so mm-hmm. they're kind of, they're kind of the two when it comes to the comics that are like the start of the League of Assassins versus yeah. like Court of Owls, which was done in like two. Yeah, and like I'm not saying that like I like the Court of Hours or the Legal Assassin. It's just 
I now generalize them as, oh, okay, you're doing that. Yeah, you're but that I, I take it as they're less of that trope just because, at least as the comic books go, they were the first to kind of do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But what would, uh, you, what would you rate season two out of ten? Eight out of ten, for sure. Eight out of ten? Eight out of ten. I'm going to go 9.5 for me. And because I did like how, like, the Nelson and Murdoch, their company was getting more, like, established, especially at the end of season one, yeah. where they started getting more customers and stuff like that, or mm-hmm. clients, and then in season two, they were, like, working and working, you know? I was just like, that's that's cute. I love the yeah. progression of the company. Yeah, and you get to see a little more of their backstory in, in this again. And you get to see um, uh, Matt in court more, you know? Yeah, which I actually really liked the court scenes, was never big on, like, the court shows, but in this, I definitely enjoyed it, and... Hoping they do it in the new show, because they didn't get a lot of that, I felt, in like the She-Hulk show, which I was kind of disappointed in. But the, some of those scenes are really good, just the way he's like in there doing his thing. It's just like, damn, I kind of like this. It's it's the way of words he has. It's yeah. Like, oh, okay. He's, you you that, got it, you know? One of the reasons why I love Daredevil is he's like not only physically strong, but mentally, like, he's just, he has such prowess and capability, you know, with like... The way he strategizes, the way he speaks, the mm-hmm. you know, way he fights, it's all, it's all super I do precise. like... Yeah. He's a warrior with words and in fists. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, but getting to season three now, what did you think of Bullseye and Kingpin? After watching the movie and comparing Bullseye, Kingpin... Which I was going to ask you movie. at the end of this, yeah. First, let's start with the show. I'll yeah, get to the movie I after. did like. I really did like um, what they did with Bullseye in the show. Yeah. Uh, even in the comic version, I don't like his costume. I don't like it at mm-hmm. all. And so, in the show, when they didn't focus so much on the the costume and more of like the character. Yeah. And who he is as a person. Yeah, I mean, if I have somebody just fucking takes over Daredevil suit, and I'm like, we're doing this cool. Yeah, and like the way he. I guess, like, they gave more depth to the character that made Definitely. more of an effect, like, more of an impact as Bullseye than they would have if they focused more on, like, his suit and his look and looking like Bullseye. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad that they didn't focus on the look of Bullseye and they focused more on how is he Bullseye. Which I'm like you, like, I'm big on comic suits, but Bullseye is one of the people where I didn't care if he gets a suit or not. I honestly yeah. was kind of fine with him in agent gear and stuff. Yep. I was like, yeah, that works. Yeah, especially because, like, he played, like, he was a fucking sociopath. Yeah. Of course a sociopath. Obsessive with that girl, too, stalking her, fucking... Like, yeah, and, and again, of course, he's not going to have a specific image for himself because he's he's manipulating. Yeah. I usually see manipulating characters or sociopaths or psychopaths as those that don't look like themselves because they're other people for you. Yeah. You know, they're going to pose as a different person for a specific person. Yeah. So I'm not going to know him as bullseye with the target on his head. I'm going to know I'm going to know him as somebody else. You're going to know him as somebody else. That's a true sociopath. Yeah. And so when they were playing him as that sociopath, I was like, yeah, I like that. Yeah, and especially just like the way like just the fact that like because he thought he was better than everyone else and mm-hmm. and just like, you know, more worthy of life, like he just deemed it well if they're less than me and piss me off, then I can kill them. Like fucking, he did this fucking coach. Him and him and um Wesley. Him and Wesley with their narcissism <laughs> and their arrogance. That's where I'm like, that's where you guys got fucked up. It's always the arrogance that, like, gets them, you know? Yeah, and I really love the way, too, Kingpin just, like, manipulates and just starts slowly hooking his fingers around him until it's just, like, he has them all under control. Mm-hmm. his control. Yep, that's where... And again, it's like, you have a... I want to say, I don't think Bullseye is a sociopath, I want to say he's a psychopath. Oh, straight up, yeah. And Kingpin is a fucking sociopath because mm-hmm. he, um, like, what what is it called? Like, uh, he analyzed the shit out of Bullseye yeah. before he manipulated him. Well, like, he also too, I'd say like Kingpin. Yeah, he has his moments where he kills out of rage, but Kingpin at the end of the day, he's not going around just killing to kill. He's like, he's playing no the different, game. No different than you know a society in their military, like. 
you have to sometimes battle, combat, and kill someone mm -hmm. to keep your territory and do stuff that you need to do. Yeah. And he it, was know, playing all, the game of it's fucking a, chess, it's a war for sure. To, it's a war to him, yeah. He was, he was definitely versus, playing. Versus, you know, Bullseye, it's, you know, I'm out here just fucking kind of killing whoever I feel like because they piss me off. He put himself in the pawn position. Yeah. Like, he... He wasn't as weak as a pawn, you know, or but easily, easily taken out, but easily one. manipulated and put into a place, you know. Then I would say, like, yeah, Kingpin, he was definitely, like, the king of that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, he was just moving everybody around. I feel like that those are two different, like, mentally unwell people, you know. Yeah. And I don't know. I like mentally unwell characters i love it when they're written in a way Make where you're like stories yeah and you're like damn it that's why you're like that i get it yeah it just it's it's a lot more interesting it gives more depth to the story and the character itself when i like you have something conflicted. like that versus just like a joker character is i'm just crazy and i kill versus i actually have these issues and trauma i and love this grayscale is, characters it, yeah and it just informs every decision you can see oh yeah I, I could have seen he was going to do exactly these things because I know all of this about him, you know? Yeah. I, I love the grayscale, and that's why, like, I'm always going to be a gray character lover because it's never black and white. Yeah. And you, I like when Matt was slowly starting to learn that it's not black and white because he was kind of on that, you know, with the no killing, no killing is ever justified, and then Punisher came in, and he was like, ah. Oh. Talk. I get it. Him, yeah. I get it. <laughs> you know? he, almost, he almost breaks the rule again and tries to kill Kingpin in this again. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, I won't. In season three, that's where he was just like, it was kind of like a, okay, Punisher, you had that teacher in a way or that lesson. And now in season three, you're going to try and exercise or practice after you learned your lessons, yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, when he was, I feel like him and Kingpin we're neck and neck when yeah. they just kept on like right after one another like i got you off guard no i got you off guard da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. that was really good i was actually at the edge of my seat like who's actually gonna fucking win here because yeah. like it doesn't seem like neither of them are gonna have good endings and so when that whole like the ending happened where he told him like you fucking stay in jail you don't do shit, mm -hmm. or I'm going to go after your girl, because now I know. Now I yeah. know who she is. Which is funny, I remember saying, you're like, who the fuck is this girl? And then you finally got to understand her character in the first season. Yeah, well, it's because in, like, the third season, I think that's where I kind of was... I, I seen the second season, and then I seen season three, and all he was doing was mentioning her. Yeah, because you never got to see her. I never got to see her from season one, so I was like, is is this, like, a real girl? Like, I remember I asked you, is that a real woman, or is he just, like, unhinged? Like, is he <laughs> crazy, and he just like, oh, I need, what was her name, Rebecca? Vanessa. Vanessa. Like, I need Vanessa. Vanessa, Vanessa, Vanessa. And I'm like, is she a real woman? Like, does she even know who he is, or he's, like... I'm going to make a world better place at, for this girl at the coffee shop that doesn't know who I am, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then she came in, I was like, oh, she's real. Yeah. And then season one, that's where I understood, like, oh, I get it. I get it. I get why you guys are in love and stuff. Yeah. She's just as fucking crazy as you are. And uh, But not in a weird Joker and Harley way. Mm-hmm. And even though you saw it out of order, what did you think of, like, Kingpin's story and progression in this season? I liked it. Kingpin yeah. was definitely my favorite villain villain, out of the whole series. And season three, I was like, yeah, this is a good villain series for him. Yeah. I really liked it, especially because you could tell, like, season one when he was being introduced, season two he was gone for a little bit because he was doing, like, getting all of his buildup ready. And then yeah. season well, three and he was in jail. Yeah, but <laughs> he was, all, like, pulling the string still. He mm -hmm. was, like, getting ready to come back, you know? Yeah. And so in season three when he came back, like, full force, I was like, yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. He's definitely my favorite. And I forgot to ask last season, so what did you think of also Karen and Foggy's stories for season two and three slash progression? I like that they stopped, or Foggy stopped trying to be romantic, and then they fell more into that, like, brother, sister, friend, mm -hmm. co-workers, having fun, you know, like, yeah. a platonic relationship. I was like, yes, that is exactly what needs to happen with a platonic relationship. They're mm -hmm. great. Amazing. I love that they became, like, a team kind of ish um <gasps> before karen went to go do her own little things off to the side becoming you know? a reporter after yeah. oh i didn't even bring up ben yeah 
That's right, because you, it was funny because you saw Karen doing it and like, oh, I like that they gave her that. And I was like, well, you, yes, but she only took that up because she was took Ben's place. Yeah, and I didn't understand, like, the gravity of her taking his position until season two, and I was like... <gasps> well, no, season uh, one is when he dies. Well, season one, season yeah. one, and that's when I was like, oh... Yeah, yeah, and low-key, I'm just like, Karen, you got him killed. And you I, definitely got him killed, dude. And that that's, scene is so hard to see. Yeah, especially because he, ben. even at the end, he didn't want to take Karen down with him, you know? Yeah, I like that he protected her. It he made still me love wanted him to protect her. And I just, I really liked their, the relationship of he, him just being like the mentor father figure to her, and then her actually, you know, following in his footsteps and being just as good of a reporter as he was. Yep. And I always love those father-daughter figure tropes that yeah, stay same. that way. Yeah. Stay that way. You know? Yeah. I hate it when they're like, father-daughter tropes. Incest. Kinkify. <laughs> it's like, stop. <laughs> stop giving them what they want. You know? Yeah, definitely. I thought it was a, a great story arc and progression for Karen to go that way. And as much as I hated losing Ben, it was, I just love that story, though. Yeah. Yeah, when she took over for Ben, I was like, perfect person to replace, you know, mm -hmm. to take over for him. And I like it because Karen also, her progression too, she becomes, a little, she becomes a little bit of a gangster. She starts fucking people up. And that's yeah. why I was like, Karen, you bad bitch. You're like the only Karen, like, character that I've actually grown to like. And I'm like, you, you a baddie. She, like, never takes any You're of fucking that crazy. crazy shit. Yeah, no. Or when she starts threatening is. people, or when she starts carrying a fucking gun around, she's mm -hmm. like, do some shit. It's like, oh, yeah, do some shit. Karen's gonna pop your ass. Yeah. <laughs> I don't and know. What about, I liked her. What about Foggy's story for season two and three? Which were they again? Well, he meets the girl, or he gets back with his ex, and they grow, but she also, like, you have Foggy and Matt falling out for a while a couple times. Oh, and then when he was running... Uh, for mayor yeah, in season that. three. You get to see the backstory of I, I, between them more. I definitely like that he wasn't tossed to the side and given like NPC stories. Yeah. He was still a very important character. You know, he I, was yeah, still... Yeah, Netflix very good about the shows is keeping in like the minor characters and still having something for them to do. Yeah, and not making them seem like they're sidekicks or they're like not really that important. Like the way that he was like running for office but also helping daredevil or Should, matt yeah there was some the moments where foggy actually was like it saved the day or like did something epic like when he charged into the to the biker bar and to, like kept going to get the information and stuff even when he was working with agent naveed naveed yeah. or naveed yeah that's where i was like this is where you can see as a trio they're great they're yeah. the, there's no imbalance of power they all have their strengths mm -hmm. and together they're like a force to be reckoned yeah, with yeah I, I, like I love watching their fla flashbacks when they're like first coming up with their you know their office name and like avocados at law avocados <laughs> <laughs> at law <laughs> um, or uh do you just see how much like just they love each other as friends in the very beginning and just like how much that friendship grows yeah like as a group like also when like Matt and Karen were together. I was like, yeah, they're cute. But also, she's definitely that one that you can't involve with, like, the way he didn't involve her with his daredevil life, because that's usually yeah. what they do also with the vigilantes, is, like, they always get with, like, their right hand, like, eye in the sky that knows about their other life, and then they're having, like, a relationship. Again, like, you know, Felicity and Oliver. Mm -hmm. Like, they kind of just always have that trope. And the fact that they didn't do that with Karen and Matt, I was like, okay, I like that, you know? Yeah. Because I was expecting it. I was like, oh, she's going to be the one that knows and is going to be the one that, like, eye in the sky, let me help you do this, this, and that. Um, and when they didn't do that, I was like, interesting, nice. And even with uh, Foggy knowing, he didn't play, like, the eye in the sky. Mm -hmm. Matt was doing it independently, but... He had, like, assistance here and there. Yeah, it was just more like moments. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, what do you think of his, Matt's whole backstory of becoming blind and, like, his relationship with his dad and also his mother. His mom. His mother being absent his whole life and then coming back and turning out to be that nun. Yeah, I was just, when I, first when I seen her praying, and she said, like, our son. I'm like, oh, fuck. 
damn, <laughs> damn, that's your mom. Ooh, he's not going to be mad. He's not going to be happy about that. He's going to be mad. Yeah. And so when I seen that, I was like, yeah, he's going to be upset you over that. Upsetty spaghetti. Upsetty spaghetti. And when he did, I was like, yeah, it's understandable. But also, like, when she, her whole choice of, like, leaving and abandoning him, I was not for her. I was just like, come on, dude, you could have yeah. done so much better. You could have taken your kid to the church. The fucking priest already loved him as a son mm -hmm. and would have taken him in at, into the orphanage. Well, and her whole thing was just like, she just didn't want to be a mom back then. She yeah, was already... and it's like, I get it, you know. She also had a postpartum depression, too. Mad bad, you know. So I get, that's why I understood why she wanted to, like, separate herself from him but also when she was getting so close still mm -hmm. i was just like girl you gotta make up your mind you gotta make up your mind yeah because you can't say like i don't want to be a mom and yeah, like, now you're gonna you stay be here a mom. in new york and do this nun shit you couldn't have gone anywhere else in the world you could have gone to gotham <laughs> you could have gone anywhere <laughs> but yeah anywhere. not my most interested story but i definitely th liked the story with all that super Super spicy. Yeah, and his dad. I, I really did like his dad. His dad, you know, he did some sleazy things, but he had to, and he did it for his son. You yeah. know, he did it. He did what he had to do to keep him and Matt alive. No, that I really liked, too, how his dad was, you know, even though he wasn't doing the greatest things or wasn't the smartest, and, you know, he would say, I'm just a dumb fighter, you know, boxing for money. Like, he always tried to push Matt to be better. He's like... You're going to be, you know, I want you to read books and go to school and be smart and, you know, stay out of fights and basically yeah. just trying to teach Matt to still, like, be a good human being and all that. Yeah. And I like the scenes, too, like, where after Matt's blind and he's, like, stitching up his dad or whatever and just, like, I don't know. I thought the relationship was really good. And I like that, like, Matt would have those conscious moments where the voice in his head was his dad and he'd be seeing his dad. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where I was like, that's that was cute. That was sweet. Yeah, and especially, too, I love the line, too, like, when you see it in the past and he's like, Murdoch's never stay down. And he's like, that's right, son. And then when he's older and he gets in the fight and gets beaten down, he's like, Murdoch's still stay down. And he yeah. gets back up. Yeah, like, that was yeah, cute. love that. Love when his, his dad, like, re revitalizes them in a battle. That was really sweet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think, is there anything else we didn't mention in the show? Characters? The shit that happened with Agent Naveed was fucking insane. Yeah. That when was... I seen that happening, I was like, damn! Yeah! Because you could tell at first he was he had good intentions. He wanted everybody to follow the rules, everybody to be whatever, but when he started, like, going deeper... Well, it was, yeah, it was one of those things where Kingpin had him in his pocket until, like, he didn't know it was until it was too late, and mm -hmm. then he couldn't do anything, or his family would be fucked. Yeah, when he tried to, like, when he tried to get out of it, that's where it was hard, because he didn't know how deep you got until yeah. you're, you were there, you know, and that's I definitely where... felt for him a little... I really wanted him to live. Yeah, I was too. really Sad. upset when he died. I was like, fuck! He was supposed to live! Mm -hmm. No! But when he left his, like, phone and the recording of him, like, snitching and doing everything and instructing his wife on what to do next, that's where I was like, yes! That's exactly what would have ran through my head of, like, I'm not gonna let myself die in fucking vain. Yeah. You know, like, I'm gonna make sure that... Even when I'm gone, shit's gonna get handled. Yeah, a little know? redemption for him. So when he when he did that, I was like, yes, this is exactly what I would have expected a character like him to do in his last hurrah, and for him to like, especially when he knew he was gonna die. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm gonna fucking die. I know I'm already this deep. Let me do what I can before I fucking go. You know? Yeah. It was just the fact that he didn't know when, so he was just like, I feel like tonight might be the night I die. Let me just make this just in case. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, I think that's pretty much it. What did what would you rate this season of Daredevil? Ten out of ten, for sure. I would also give it, I think, a ten out of ten. Yep. Um, so now a quick little side thing off it. Now you've seen the Daredevil movie. <laughs> so bad. What did you think of Bullseye and Kingpin in that? Which which is better? Okay. <laughs> question is that which is better the movie the movie was better you know? yeah. and how about them basically reenacting that whole bullseye fight in the church it was 
I'm not gonna lie, they made it look so much better in the show. Yeah. The show made it look so much fucking cooler. And that scene with the priest dying, too, felt yeah, a lot more weight to a, it. A lot more depth, a lot more detail. You can tell that the movie was cramming everything into it, but the show was the in-depth. Like, yeah, no, we're gonna explain this timeline of the movie, but in depth, you know? Yeah, I think of how many hours the show is versus how many hours the two hours the movie is. Like, yeah. Trying to put Cramming even three Electra seasons, story in there. Three seasons into one fucking movie. I did not, like, had I just, they didn't make this show, I would have not liked Daredevil yeah. because of the fucking movie. Because I didn't like how him and Electra got together. It was so fucking quick. It was so weird. Very cheesy, too. Cheesy. Ugh. Um, and, like, fucking, uh, Bullseye being, like, that sure. That crazy version. Yeah, he's, like, not a psychopath, he's just fucking, like. Well, no, he's a psychopath, but he's just fucking stupid. Yeah, he's, like. There's no depth to it. He's not even, he's like. Joker crazy. Yeah, he's, like, Joker crazy, but stupid. Why would he, he's Carnage crazy. Yeah. I guess there's, like, levels to Joker in some iterations, but. He's just like Carnage crazy, where it's just basically, I just kill because that's what I do. He's just batshit, you know? And, like, some of the scenes where, again, you could tell what year this was made in, mm -hmm. you know, very, where... Very much feel that. It was very much, like, camp. Like... The Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies were this time. It was very yeah, campy, very, stuff. like... You could tell it was the 90s. Like, it screamed the 90s. Like, where you wanted to be, like, that cliche here, and it was all cool to be that badass, da, 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 or I'm crazy and unhinged, and it's cool and cute mm -hmm. to be that crazy and unhinged. Like, I will say, I did love the movie suit, though. Of Daredevil's movie suit. I like the shows. The I like the shows, too, but the movie suit looks so much more, like, comic accurate, which is why I love it. Well, uh, and to me, it's like... Because it's, I was gonna say it's also to me like the arrow suit. It's like that leathery version, you know. My thing is to that I don't know. It looked like latex. Well, I mean, it like I mean, like the arrow show how it's like that leather, la yeah, like, that kind of suit as opposed to like armored, which yeah. is what they were going for in the show to have like more realistic how it protects them. And see, I like the realistic because mm -hmm. it, it feels more real that way, you know. Like yeah. if a vigilante was real, I would expect their suits to look like that, you know. Whereas the movie it looked very like unrealistic it seemed illogical like i don't i can't see a grown person vigilante wearing that comfortably and being able to fight without tearing something you no. know or looking too obvious mm -hmm. um uh yeah a lot of corny scenes where it just like when bullseye killed that one guy at the bar with like oh, a the pen clips. and everybody was just like Okay. Yeah. Like, nobody's gonna freak the fuck out. He just fucking murdered somebody for making a joke. Ruined Colin nobody's gonna call the fucking cops. Nobody's gonna react. Just, damn, Bill died. Yeah. Like, what? That's the type of, like, NPC shit that I was just like, this is a movie, you know? Like, this is not realistic. Like, the show had moments where it's like, oh my god, they killed this person. Oh my god, let's freak out and call the cops, you know? And where they, I'm like, yeah. They even pulled a Batman 89, too, in that movie, which I thought was funny, and they made Kingpin the killer of Matt's parent, or dad. Yeah, that's what I was like, and oh was my like god, a, no, you guys did it. It was Kingpin's initiation into, like, a gang back then or whatever. Yeah, that's where I was like, okay, you guys went with that. Again, it screamed 90s, because yeah. that's also what they did with, like, the, the Spider-Man movie. You know right but even though that was in his story that was yeah. actually in his story but still it was just like okay <laughs> you and, know and it's funny too i never like really thought realized it when i was younger but daredevil kills hell of people in that movie <laughs> and it's I, did, I like didn't think about it that that's the whole lesson of that movie is for him is not killing kingpin at the end is when he finally like becomes a true hero yeah you just had to learn that killing is wrong after killing like fucking a dozen people i know i love that Kills hundred people cause a kingpin. I don't kill people. Or like when he's like, I can't kill you. I need you to see justice. Why him of all people? He was the one I would say like you could break that rule for. Whereas everybody else that you justice. killed, they should have just went to jail. Yeah, it wasn't personal. It wasn't fucking personal. Whereas this guy, it was fucking personal. Why would you want to see the man that personally murdered your parents? in jail rather than the other people that like just kicked your foot on accident now you have to fucking murder that one yeah make it make sense you know yeah so 
Whereas in the show, it was just like, no, I don't kill, I don't kill. Oh, you, I really want to fucking kill, yeah. but I'm not going to do it, you know? I, I think having you stop after season two and watch that real quick was a, a good way to make you appreciate the show even more. There are so many times where I was just like, ew, the I can't watch better. it, I can't watch it, I can't watch it. Yeah, like Karen's not even a thing in that movie. And I think that secretary in the very beginning, I think that is Karen, but I'm not sure. I have a feeling, yeah. But it's just something like, so she's not even a thing in that. Electra's like very one-dimensional, Kingpin's... A lot less depth. They size, did give nothing. Electra a lot more humanity. Yeah, a it's because they want humanity. They're trying to go for the. We want you to like her, and we need to make her more. And we're gonna appealing to, to society versus that is isn't supposed to be a healthy character in the show. It's supposed to be more like the comic where she's broken and is more of a toxic relationship. Yeah, and see, the way that their dynamic in the movie was so fucking rushed and forced that when she died, I was like, didn't we just say hi to her last yeah, week? I was like, oh, well, we only got two hours. We got like 10 minutes screen time to get them together, so make it happen. But yeah, and it was just like, <laughs> didn't we just, didn't he just meet her like a month, like a day ago? Right. Like she's dead already and he's crying at her funeral? Well, we had a playground fight in front of kids, so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm. That movie was so yeah, so... So bad. I did not like it. Yeah, definitely definitely made you like the show more, I'm sure. The rating was a 1 out of 10, for sure. Yeah. But I did love the show. The show, it made me appreciate the show a lot more. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, that is pretty much our review of Daredevil, the show, season 1 through 3. If you guys haven't seen it, I don't know why you watched this. You just got a lot of spoilers. But uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you guys think of Daredevil the show? And what do you think of the shitty movie from back in the day? Do you guys like the suit like I do? <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Because we had the top ten list last time of our favorite animated like Disney, DreamWorks, and Pixar movies, I believe it was. Yep. This time we decided to do basically all the other movies, which is... Our top ten Universal Fox Weinstein, and Weinstein Company animated movies, mm -hmm. which I thought there was going to be a lot more that I liked from this. So this list was hard. The last three I had to like kind of randomly choose. Yeah, just whatever I've seen. Yeah, but uh, real quick, why don't you start off with your top ten list? Okay, so my top ten, uh, starting from ten, Igor from Weinstein Company. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah, I did like Igor. It was cute. Uh, you know, it was probably one of the very few, like, 3D movies that were made in that time frame that I actually liked and I didn't find, like, cringe, you mm -hmm. know? Um, yeah, so Igor, it was cute. Uh, number nine was How to Train Your Dragon, which that one is by... Nice. Um, well, it's technically DreamWorks, it was taken... but it's also the other one. So I actually didn't include that on my list because I put on my other list. But it's it's like one of those both. I know the I think first it's, uh, Universal movie. The first movie was first produced by Universal, and then they partnered with DreamWorks yeah. for the animation studio and more of that. So that's why I was like, I'm gonna put it on here and not on my last list because my last list was a lot harder to make, yeah. you know. <laughs> Um, That's how sad I used it. I was like, fuck. Yeah, no. So for this list, I was like, okay, how do you train your dragon? I'll do that because it's technically the first one, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then number eight was Fantastic Mr. Fox, which was by Fox Century. Um, loved it. Love claymation. I love the... Back in the day, it used to scare me as a child, you know, the clay movement yeah. clay movies. Not Just because they would, like, move, like, so weird. It wasn't, like, No, yeah, not you know, uncommon for people to say that. It was weird. So when I watched this one, it was very aesthetically pleasing. The soundtrack was really peaceful. I think it was, like, taken around, like, the fall. Like, that was the season that they had it in. Mm -hmm. Love the fall. So I was like, okay, this is cute. I love it. Um, seven was Robots. Nice. Robin Williams. Most of his, most if not all of his movies are amazing. Mm -hmm. So when he was in it, made me love it Just all the piece. more. He was so funny. Yeah, no, loved him. Especially the way, like, my favorite scene is, like, I know the city, like, the back of my hand. Oh, that's new. And then he gets fucking knocked <laughs> yeah. out. I was like, dude, yes, that's so funny. As a kid, I didn't get that joke until I was a teenager. And I was like, oh, that's funny. That's really funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, number six, An American Tale. Uh, this is the first one. Um, in which I'll connect it to my number five, which is an American Tale 2, the second one, which is Five Goes West. Now, I put number one 
uh, or I put the first one at number six because I did like it. It had a good story. It was a good introduction story, but the one I started with was the second movie, which was Five of Goes West, and that one was ultimately my favorite because that was just the first movie the I seen. Nostalgic attachment. Yeah. yeah, and it was taken in like the western you know, time frame, and at the time when I was a kid, I was very much into Western aesthetic. Yeah. The cowboys and everything. I don't know why, I just really loved cowboys and Indians and all that Mm -hmm. um, around that age. I forgot how old I was, but, um, yeah. So, I did like Five Goes West, and then number four is The Jetsons by Universal. Love The Jetsons. It's just one of those old movies that I just really like. That's, I didn't watch the show, um, because I think I think it was taken off a of boomerang right around the time where my memory started developing a little bit more. Um, so I don't remember watching it on TV as much, but mm-hmm. when I seen the movie as I think I was like 10 or 12, that's when I started watching the actual TV show online. And I was like, okay, this is cute, you know? Yeah. Um, number three is We're Back by Universal. If nobody knows what that is, go watch oh. it. You don't? Yeah. Uh, so basically... This scientist is, he built like a time machine and he's trying to bring dinosaurs back. It's like a Jurassic Park thing, but the thing is he wanted to give them humanity so they are conscious beings and they can understand the English and hang out with us and be humanized, um, but just bring them to the the present. Just as like a, you know, uh, I forgot, like, I think it was because he wanted them in like museums and stuff and to teach about how they lived back gotcha. then but in like speaking from themselves okay um and i'm guessing you meant more like intelligence not humanity right no like humanity too like they were oh, given okay. intelligence but they could also feel things and more like they were self-aware you know so they were just like instead of being like beasts and stuff like that they were just like oh i feel things i want to eat i want to communicate i want to talk mm-hmm. i have this intelligence but also i care about like, there's these two little kids that they meet and they want to protect because they're, like, orphans or, like, not cared for by their parents. Nice. So they get really close connected. Helping, yeah, watching after yeah. them. Yeah, whereas cool. the villain of the movie is, like, this uh, guy that's in charge of, like, a circus, like, a dark circus that wants to turn them back into beasts and scare people. Gotcha. Yeah, so it's, like, a whole good and evil type of thing, you know? But it's a, such a cute movie. <laughs> Love it. And it has the um, animation, the... Two, the 1D or 2D 2D flat animation that's just kind of like like Land Before Time yeah. Dumbelina love that animation um, and then number two is Anastasia I loved Anastasia nostalgic connection I thought like I didn't know at the time the history behind it mm-hmm. um, and that's kind of what got me interested in history as a kid when I started reading up like Who's Anastasia? Who are the Romanovs? And like, as a kid reading into that, I was like, holy shit, that's fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. As an adult, I kind of liked Anastasia because it kind of gave like hope, you know, Anastasia is out there, what have you. Whereas like now I'm just like, she's not, she's not out there, you know? (laughs) I don't believe she's out there. I don't think she survived. Yeah, Um, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. I don't know who that is. The Romanovs? Oh yeah, we're gonna have to watch a documentary. You mean Natasha Romanov, Scarlet? Yes. The Scarlet. Definitely. Black Widow. I almost said Scarlet Witch. Yeah. But it kind of gave, like, that, like, fantasy to, like, a historical time in our human life, you know? Gotcha. Um, And the number one would definitely be Land Before Time, the first one. Honestly, I feel like that is the first movie I've ever watched, like, as a child. Mm -hmm. Like... I think that's, like, the only, the first movie in my head that actually indented on my memory. And I yeah. was, like, three or four yeah, years could, old. Like, you remember and understand, yeah. yeah. Three or four years old, that's when I, like, watched that and I was cognitive, you know, and I could mm-hmm. understand what was going on and I, like, understood the feelings of the movie, you yeah. know. So, just nostalgic connection and I feel like that's what kind of taught me, like, how to feel and empathy with characters in a movie Mm -hmm. um but yeah loved loved land before time uh but yeah starting again 10 igor nine how to train your dragon eight is fantastic mr fox seven is robots six is an american tale one uh five is an american tale two 
Uh, four is the Jetsons. Three is We're Back. Two is Anastasia. And one is Land Before Time. Nice. Like the list. Yes. A couple of those, too, I actually didn't even know, too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, getting into mine real quick, it's a little harder. The last like three, I had to kind of just pick like some... I just had to pick some that I watched that I at least like didn't hate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, number ten, that's gonna be Igor. Mm -hmm. I don't remember much about this movie, so I'm just gonna say that it was cool and I enjoyed it. Number nine, this one I actually remember a little more, but that's gonna be Robots. Once again, Robin Williams got to love yep. that joke. You know, just the jokes in that they really hit. I I really like the whole just I like steampunk and robots and stuff. So that whole like universe was just really interesting to me. Aunt <laughs> and like yeah, once again, just the movie's just hella funny. Too. I just love just how he love yells for her. The oh, voice Fanny. acting that is great. We brought someone. I love the character <laughs> designs. It's good. It's just a good movie. Yeah, it was cute. But yeah, that's that's my number nine and number eight. One of the more newer ones I had actually seen, but uh, it was actually I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought it was I was going to, and that's Rio. Mm. Which is the the bird one, which was actually yeah. like really fun one and just like nice, you, you know, cultural. The first one, right? Yeah, okay. I I never seen the second one, but I I just remember it was like really cool and colorful and just mm -hmm. like the music to it was awesome. Um, and I it was just a it, nice story. And I believe it shed light on like an endangered species. Yeah, because I don't I think they're extinct now. I think they might be. Yeah, I I feel like the blue macaws are extinct now. I read something about that. Um, but yeah, I know that movie was to spread awareness about, like, Brazil's, like, really bad animal trafficking right now, mm -hmm. or back then. I don't know if it's as bad anymore, but yeah, I respected that. I was like, I like that. It yeah. was a cute movie, and it sent a really good message, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah, I had to, had to put Rio at number eight. Enjoyed that one. Get at number seven here. This is where my list starts being a little more true. <laughs> Sorry, Fly. <laughs> and number seven, I got The Land Before Time 2. Uh, number, Chopper. You know, classic. You know, love the animation. So many people love The Land Before Time movies. God damn, there's so many of them, too. Yeah. I did not know how many there were. Like, I remember watching them. It's just I didn't remember. Oh, I don't. I've seen, like, maybe three. I've seen I've, the first three, and that's it, I think. I've seen... I want to say I've seen five. I know there's, like, eight out right now. Eight or seven. But I've only seen five. Yeah. And I was just like, God damn, like this is a lot. Like when is the when is the meteor coming? <laughs> like this is a long series. But yeah, well, it's, you know, sad story. The whole thing with the grandparents and that one, and you get Chopper and yeah, just you know another classic. I had that one on VHS, so definitely one of my favorites. And number six, um, it's been a while, so I actually don't remember this one too much. But Hoodwinked Two, second one. That one, I have not watched. I that. really enjoyed the first one. I didn't enjoy this one as much as the first one, but I still liked it a lot. So I had to put that at number six. Mm -hmm. um, number five, classic. I have the Land Before Time one. Yep. Yeah, uh, my favorite out of the two, definitely. Really love the story. It's so sad. Um, just great animation. You know, good music. Fucking just, you know, it's 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 a classic. It's on most people's list and pretty high up there. And definitely on mine at number five. I still cry when I watch it. Yeah, I can't sad. watch it or I'll cry. Number four, this one, I didn't like it as much as a, when I was younger. Like it was just like a, in the middle for me. But now it's actually become one of my favorite ones. I think it's because of the soundtrack, and that's gonna be Ice Age. But uh, you, you know, I love that one. Just the good music, the story. It's just so sweet with the little baby and everything. I love you know the character, the development of the fucking tiger, the saber tooth. Um, you get, I love Manny. Manny's <laughs> so funny. Like, just like, it's great cast, great soundtrack, great story, good animation, you know? Yeah. Um. I like get, the first one, too. I yeah. like the first one. I've watched all of them. I've sadly. only seen the first two, but I've only seen the second one once, and I don't really remember it. I, I've watched I every like single much. one, and I, I liked it. I did like the series, but after after the second one, I was just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some, one of those. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, "They'll just keep making as much money just as they can." Keep going and board. going and going, and I'm like, "I get it, but goddamn!" <laughs> like, <laughs> now, uh, get into my number three though. Super classic, super old one. I love this one to fucking death. That's Ferngully. 
such a great story. You know, I oh, love. Fuck, I forgot Fern Gully. That was the whole reason. Oh, fuck. That was the whole reason. There's two movies on this. This whole reason why we're I doing totally this list. I totally forgot Fern Gully. Fuck. Yeah. So I had to. If you want to swap out one. Out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this and my number one are the two reasons why we're doing this particular list because I couldn't put on the other one. Fern Gully was. A and good one. actually, another Robin Williams the, movie. Three. And just yeah, and you got Robin Williams. I love the soundtrack. The animation is beautiful. And I just, I love nature and all that, so just the story, you know, it's it's like a and d story, you know, you get the little fairies and... Another good, um, uh, what is it, another good uh, message, too. Yeah, and to just... Take care of life. The pollution stuff. monster, it's great, I love his song and the way it's just, like, animated, like, oozing all over the place, like, it's just, a, it's a great movie. Yeah, they portrayed it really well, where it's just like, ew, you know, it's gross, it's goopy. And I like it, because it was, like, woke without even being woke, you know, you had just that slight message of the, I forget her name, but the fairy who teaches the the, the man when he shrinks him, not just, like, respect nature, but in, like, a very slight way without even, like, really consciously doing it, just, like, kind of how to respect women at the same time. Yep. Because he was, he was a douche. Yeah, because, like, you know, he, does, he does a kiss her or whatever at the one time, and she's like, whoa, well, hold up. And then, the you know, fuck? You know. So just, like, it was nice. It's, it's one of those things where you could tell, like, it, they weren't, like, going for that to be that. It just, like, came naturally in the writing, which, mm-hmm. is, which is cool. But, yeah, that's my number three. My number two, though, I just, I love this one for the, the story concept idea. It's so great. Mystery. And that's going to be Hoodwinked. I love it. Just the the whole idea is just so great to me. I know you don't like it apparently with that face, but <laughs> it's it's a great story. I love the whole idea of the mystery between all the fairy tales and just like the way it interacts and the world building. It's so good and the yeah. jokes and that are really funny. Um, yeah, I seen that randomly on TV one day and it just surprised me. It became one of my favorites like right away. <laughs> uh, we're getting into my number one. The other reason that we're doing this list today, my favorite is. Balto, another great classic, a big dog wolf lover, so I just love that story, it's just, you know, the outcast, you know, very, very labeled to me as being, you know, a mutt, just fucking, you know, never gets accepted into anywhere because he doesn't fit in exactly, and but yet he still tries to just do good and be the hero and he saves the little girl and gets some medicine for her, which, you know, just such a great and sad story, but yeah, the... Just, yeah. <laughs> that little girl almost died then. It's so sad. Uh, Balto reminds me of if anybody's a Britney Broski fan. She's like, You've all seen it. Everybody, don't fucking lie. Why did they make Balto, Spirit, all those main character animals hot? And I was like, No! <laughs> and I feel like they gave, like, I liked Balto for the wholesome story of it. But yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I've never been like, too gun ho on like animal movies. Like I like certain animal movies. Yes, yeah, you it's like just... the Aristocats and because those were cute. And animal... that Balto's cute too. It's cute. Balto. I was just like that was after my Aristocats era. Like after I got out of that phase, I was just like okay, you know, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, that's my and it was one. Disney. I'm gonna like Disney. I was more of a Disney kid. Yeah, Balto's better. <laughs> and knowing that, Arist- Balto isn't racist. Aristocats is racist. It was realistic, okay? It wasn't racist. Hey, that's racist. It yeah. was realistic. That is not realistic. <laughs> to the time that they were in, that's realistic, you know? No. <laughs> I don't think you and I are talking about the same thing. It was very classist. I get it. Because, again, it was in no, the Victorian time. I'm talking about more about the character designs with the fucking... Ching Chong cats that they came up with. That was fucking racist. Yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's where that's I get it. Racist. That Balto was, doesn't have I'm that. Not, I'm not saying that Disney didn't have... And that's have... not the only time they do that shit. Disney was bad back then. I but get Balto it. But Balto doesn't do that at all. So Balto Because can't. of the time frame. The time... Balto didn't come out anywhere near the same time as the Aristocats. Oh. Aristocats came in like the late... I want to say the late... I'm sure it's 80s, and Balto is only 90s, so it's not that much later. It's not, it's not like that much 50s. later. But they so did start evolving towards the end of the 90s. And there are other movies that didn't do that, so they have no excuse. Robin Hood. Oh, Robin Hood. <laughs> Older. Two. True. 
But yeah, anyways, that's my number one, is Balto. Real quick, I'm gonna run it back. I got number 10, Igor, number 9, Robots, number 8, Rio, at number 7, Lamb Before Time 2, at, ho at number 6, Hoodwinked 2, at 5, Lamb Before Time 1, at 4, Ice Age, 3, Fern Goalie, 2, Hoodwinked, and at number 1, Balto. But uh, that's gonna be it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment below. Let us know you guys' top tens. Let us know what you thought of Daredevil and all that good stuff. Um, you know, check out the links below if you want to go to extra mile support. We got a bunch of stuff you can buy and download and all that good stuff. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace.